Okay. All right, so welcome back um, to the channel. Um, what There are several things I want to do tonight. One of them is to show you again the kind of a follow-up to the last video I did um, talking about how you use how you use a DSLR camera as a webcam. Um, so right now what you're seeing, and I did this video earlier this week, is that you're seeing me using my smartphone, right, as a webcam. So if you take a look at what we have here, um, then you will notice that this is my smartphone that I'm viewing the actual camera on, right? Um, and I know I did a video back talking, um, a while back talking about how we use a DSLR camera as a webcam with OBS, right? Um, I got a lot of questions from the video, so I thought I would answer those now. Um, some of the questions that came up was one in terms of compatibility with other um, DSLR cameras. And for that, you can check on the website and see a list of compatible cameras. Specifically for now, I'm focusing on the Nikon D3300. And I know that the Nikon D3500 also works um, with uh, the software that we're using, which is the Digicam uh, control for Nikon. Um, so some people had some issues in terms of glitches um, with the software. And um, somebody mentioned in the comment below, as I'll show you, that they were looking for the, um, they were trying to figure out how to take off the little green box from within it. So I also want to show you a solution for that and then talk about the autofocus and some of the issues I'm having with the program itself. So let me show you that, how to connect your DSLR Nikon D3300 to the OBS software. So what I did was that uh, I downloaded this software again, the Digicam Control, uh, and it's a Digicam Control 2.1.2. Um, there seems to have been a major problem with the 2.1.1, right? Which caused my computer to crash. And so, which hence the reason why I'm redoing this video, because I noticed a lot of complaints about um, the software crashing, your know, camera freezing up and so forth. So what fixed the issue for me was the use of the 2.1.2, um, which I downloaded direct off their website. Um, it took me to some SourceForge um, website and I got it from there. So after you've opened up the Digicam control, um, you can then, I have my camera on already. And so what I'm doing is that I'm just doing live view. And that should bring on your camera. So you can see there I have it on the continuous autofocus so that it can find me in the picture itself. So you should be seeing that and you notice that I'm using my lens at 1.8, right? So when I click on autofocus, it should focus in on my um, face there and we could also see that it blurs the background because of the type of lens that I'm using. So it does um, let you get a far better picture than just using a regular webcam or using your know, smartphone itself and some smartphones also bring um, pretty decent images. So um, one of the problems that people had was how do you get this green marking off and then you can then capture the screen itself with the OBS by just capturing the window. So what I found out was that whenever I click here to get the green marking off, it will freeze up. So you notice it's frozen right now, uh, which is a problem that I, I think a lot of people had. Uh, one of the workarounds that I found for this was that you can click on having it start to record a video and then you can remove the green marking and in, in this case it's recording to the camera itself and then stop the recording and this way the green marking disappears and then we're on back as normal. So that's the way um, I found to get rid of the green autofocus box um, that would appear on the screen. Um, the lag that I think people are complaining about where they're saying that the software had some lag in terms of their camera, um, I think had to do again with the version of the software that they were using. Um, so the 2.1.2 does fix that. And, and this is the only way I've found um, that works for tethering the Nikon D3300 and the Nikon D3500 to your computer device. And of course, then this gives you a chance to make use of your Nikon camera a little bit more, right? And so you can always add in the focus and so forth. Now, the next step in this 
is of course to add this device to OBS and let me show you that quickly and uh, we can re you can refer back to the other video where I added in a browser um, window and then I did the cropping of the browser window into OBS right so for us and I'll just pull the OBS screen over so you guys can see this so in OBS and I'll add it in as another scene um, in OBS we can click on and I created a new scene called DSLR I will add in a new source and I'll call it to capture window so window capture say okay um, and already it says uh, it's capturing the live view from cam control at exe which is what I want so this is the view I want to capture with OBS and so I'll say okay and there we have it so it's giving me my camera setting here so what we need to do now is what we did last time similarly where we're able to simply now just crop in the window into the particular section that we want so to do that again we right click and go to transform and edit transformation and I'm sweating because I don't want the fan to make noise and uh, we can crop left and this is a lot so I'll say let's say 250 it looks like yeah uh, we can go a little bit more and you can fine tune this as you go along right uh, we can also crop the right in a little just to get rid of all of those um, little icons that are there and somebody asked the question in the comments also about how do we get rid of the icons and again you just want to crop into the section that you will be using um, the top that's about 150 and on the bottom um, that looks like about 120 yeah somewhere around there right so we can cut this in a little bit more and so I ended up with only that section and then I can enlarge in that to fit the screen that I want right so I can have my um, DSLR camera um, being used as my webcam in OBS and of course I'm putting this into another scene by itself and I've created and this is just some extra I've created a shortcut to change scene so whenever I press this button it changes scene to the recording only so this is what you'll see on the screen at the moment um, and so if I'm talking and there's something else I want to explain uh, while I'm working I can then change scene to maybe the first one and then it takes me back to what is on screen so that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll move this back over so you're seeing the main screen. And again, my main screen is still the capture. And let me try to autofocus in a little bit, right? So what we have is that I have created three scenes. Scene one um, is the main screen. Scene two is my phone screen. And scene three is my DSLR screen that you're seeing now. And so you can compare the different quality of images or the different quality of video that is found on each screen. So I have my smaller camera on scene one, which is my webcam, and that's a 720p. I have my phone camera or my smartphone. And again, this is from the Samsung S10 Plus. And so that quality is pretty decent, right? And I also have my DSLR um, camera and of course I can get that nice um, blurred background and focus on all the sweat on my face right now so again this is just to answer the question that people had um, from the last video um, where we spoke about how you connect your DSLR um, specifically Nikon D3300 to your PC and use it as a webcam or as a camera um, in OBS Studio. So from here on, you probably will see me do more streaming using my DSLR camera because of the up update or the upgrade of the software. So um, the cam view from the company from, or from these people definitely fixed a lot of the problems that we had previously um, in terms of Digicam control. Um, so again, go to their website uh, and download the new Digicom control and let me pull that to the screen download the new software from here 
ensure that it is the 2.1.2 um, version. And also, I mentioned in the last video, and some people asked a question about the cable, and it is a um, USB cable specifically for the Nikon D3300. Right, so I think I mentioned it was HDMI to USB, which would be weird, but it is a Nikon um, USB cable for the D3300. So, again, this is just a quick summary from the last video, and I'm hoping that you enjoy this video. If you like it, um, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment below. I, I like the feedback that I got from the last video, so this is just a follow-up to show you that um, we are fixing, or I'm showing you how to fix the glitches that were there. Uh, like always, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, go hit that notification bell so that you can see whenever I post up new videos. In the meantime, like always, be safe and go geek yourself.